Yo, yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Week three, episode three edition of the college football with the D-Gen Central guys. How you guys feeling? How you guys doing? Uh, not I'm on a heater, after. boys. Yeah, Alina's won. Alina has won both weeks in college football. Um, yeah, big. I lost both my doer dies, so I had to get back in the lab. I'm, uh, I'm on the verge of getting fucked out of something. I don't know what. We'll have to decide mm-hmm. if I at lose. This rate, at this rate, I could sponsor the next fucking burger challenge. I'm up like 20 bergs. Yeah, you. Yeah, that's for yeah. sure. So I'll, I'll, get to the, uh, I'll get to our <laughs> overall stats through the first two weeks of college football. But first, again, I want to uh, bring up our sponsor again with uh, Save Our Livers. Um, hope everyone's been staying safe out there, drinking a lot. I know we have. Michael just had a birthday, so I know he's probably could use I'm one drinking. of these. Uh, I'm drinking. <laughs> on the website, saverlivers.com. They also have a victory lap uh, kit for anything you might need after a really bad hangover you have in the morning after a long night of drinking. I um, actually saw our other victory lap guy, Zach Spender, out at New Finney's uh, last weekend. And the face we What's both had, I'm assuming we both – Probably could have used one of those kids before Saturday college football. So give that check out. Go see if uh, one of those kids would help you guys out. If you purchase a victory lap one, it obviously helps us with our content, gives us a little more money to create some new stuff. So we'll give a check out. So let's get right into a recap of how we all did in week two. Um, as you could tell, as we were talking, Alina's on absolute fire hitting both of his big burger bets and going 4-0 and overall in week two, um, plus, 11, plus 11 units, 4-0 uh, and this past week, and it's now overall 6-2, and and including 2-0 and on do or dies. Um, I had a shit week. I <laughs> down. How many units am I up, though? Is it 19? You're up 19.8 total. That's wow. insane, dude. Yeah, that's that's, insane. that's so, a that's a hefty lead right now for the plaque. Very hefty, and a shortened season. Like My, Michael and I are gonna have to make up some Big Ten footballs back. That's where I thrive too. You guys are in trouble. This is like worst case scenario because now like it's putting a lot of pressure for my do or dies, and I'm sure Michael feels the same way. Like uh, my do or dies, a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. you, you want to talk about pressure? Fuck pressure. Like, yeah. So we'll get into like the punishment thing, but also. Um, so, Michael and I both lost around five and a half-ish units. Um, I went I went, uh, I went, went one and four and lost, my, and lost my do or die. And Michael went um, – I think he went three and – I went six, three and three. Or three and three. Or three what? and four. Because you were three and four after last week. Yeah. No, yeah, three and four, three and four. I lost that parlay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and so I lost my do or die this past week. I only did one, so I'm on a one do or die losing streak. Unfortunately for Michael, he lost both of his do or die bets. Um, honestly, Michael did pretty well this week. Just the do or die bets really brought his units down. Oh, yeah, so I think- because I had Miami money line, which was plus money, but I had fucking. Georgia Tech and App State, like you said, both my do or dies were fucking for three units. So, yeah. and, I had, uh, and I had Tulane minus the seven. That was that dude. Let's that's let's, a bad let's talk, beat. Quick. Let's talk real quick. They are literally dominating. I mean, dominating. You're, my dad texted me at halftime and literally says, "I think this is the worst Navy team I've ever seen." And I responded, "Yeah, yeah it probably is." I look at the score. It's the fourth quarter. Navy's, like, going in to win. I'm, like, sitting there, like, wait, what the fuck happened? Right. Like, their offense is horrible. Their defense is horrible. I don't know what happened at halftime, but that that had, like, that sucks for you for sure because that should have yeah. been an easy dub. That was that was basically the difference because that was a six-unit difference, yep. and I lost, like, five and a half. So, I would have ended 6. the week. 6.3-unit difference. Yeah. I would have ended the week pretty even if my do or die would have hit because I did pretty poorly on the other ones as well, but whatever. It's a new week, new car. Hey, um, SEC is back too, which is big, yeah. big time football. That's big. Absolutely. We won't have to keep chipping at these FCC, FCS teams. Fuck them. Yeah. 
<laughs> except for the one I might have on my card this week. But we'll get into it. <laughs> um, so let's get right into it. We got four game, four highlighted games that we're going to talk about before we get to our individual cards. Um, wow. Obviously, like game day is always going to be a game we'll talk about at the end. The last game we'll talk about. Um, but let's get right into it. So first game we're going to talk about, we got, speaking of the SEC, we got Kentucky and Auburn. Um, Auburn's a home team, and Auburn's coming in with a seven and a half point favorite, and the over under is forty nine and a half. How you guys so, feeling? Either these teams played yet? What are you guys thinking? What's going to be awesome about SEC games is they're all going to have at least twenty thousand fans, like every single one of them. The SEC doesn't fucking care. Georgia put out a thing. They said we will open the tailgate lots, but no tailgating is allowed. So, which makes complete sense. Yeah, that you know, that's just a hey, we said no tailgating, but we also opened the lots, so we're covering our asses while we're allowing you to party. But Auburn returns their quarterback, freshman quarterback last year, beat Oregon game one, ended up, I think they went like nine and three, lost their bowl game to Minnesota. Kentucky's pretty good. Last year, they had like a fifth string wide receiver, or their wide receiver played quarterback. He was like the fifth string quarterback and just ran the ball the whole time. I think in a normal year, Kentucky would not come into the game ranked. If the Big Ten could still be ranked, I don't think Kentucky would be ranked. Um, I think a lot of people shit on Bo Nix, but, like, he was a true freshman, and he was playing, like, SEC football. Um, I think he's going to be good this year. I think this is a kind of like a make-or-break year for Gus Malzahn. Um, like – Auburn, SEC is not like the Big Ten, other than Ohio State. I'll exclude Ohio State. But, like, at Big Ten, if you beat your rival, you're safe. SEC, like, Gus Malzahn has, like, a 500 record against Alabama. I think anyone would take that. But everyone's, like, he's on the hot seat because they haven't really won. They haven't been – I don't know. They haven't been in the SEC championship since – Yeah. They won a few years back. But, like, I just think this is Gus Malzahn's, like, make or break year. I think they're going to come out ready to play at home. I would feel a little different if the game was at Kentucky. But I got to say, I think Auburn kind of rolls in this game. I think it might come out close at first, but I think Auburn comes out and rolls. You know these fucking teams down south have been practicing more than you're allowed to. They haven't been social distancing or anything like that. Like Clemson came out. Dude, they looked like they were in midseason form. Clemson, Clemson, I'm sure Ohio State, Oklahoma, those type of teams have all not been practicing any, like, differently. I think Auburn fucking rolls. See, I – the only thing that uh, – Kentucky has their quarterback and running back back, and then they also – Their running four, back is good. Yeah, Lynn, Lynn Bowden. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also got uh, four starters on the D-line back. Um, so, I don't know. Or maybe that's offensive line. I can't remember what I read, but I don't know if I like Auburn necessarily that much. Like, aren't hasn't Kentucky's been like surprise? Like, plays these teams surprisingly close. But but I thought with it being at uh, at Auburn, that really makes me want to take Auburn as well. Um, wait, so do these games have to be in our card too, or no? Like the ones we no. talk about? No, 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 no. no, no. Just say, you just say what like. Okay, so. Like, what you like the most out of those four? And the, and the and the points are just right where I think it's going to end up. Like, well, that's the 20, thing is it's a seven and a half game though, so it's like yeah. I mean, Auburn could win by seven and look good. I know, still I mean, not cover. Like I'm thinking like twenty four seventeen type game, and like maybe they're they're up like twenty one to ten, like just up by like they're controlling the game, but they end up not like a backdoor cover from. Well, that's the thing. Um, what if they're up twenty four to ten and they're up like twenty four nothing at half? And yeah. All, like and they lose twenty four to seventeen, and I've we've all seen those games against teams who are capable. Not saying Kentucky necessarily is, but like where Auburn starts off kind of slow, or both both teams really. But I mean Auburn's defense is solid, right? I mean they got guys coming back. Auburn, yeah, right. They lost like their two best defensive linemen, but they returned like a, they have like a lot of they played a lot of guys on defense last year. Um, they kind of rotate a lot of receivers last year. So I want to say, like, I mean, they're going to return guys who got good minutes. And then you obviously yeah. have Bo Nix coming back. And they got Seth, Seth Williams, too, who's a I'm, beast. I'm pretty sure they really only lost defensive players. I'm sure they lost a few offensive players, but. Man, 
I I liked Bo. I thought Bo Nix. He did not overall like there was times where he had his freshman moments, but overall he I, I would say he did not play like a freshman last year in the SEC, which is always impressive. So I think I'm gonna go Auburn. It's seven and a half right now, correct? Eight. It's eight. eight? Yeah, seven. I said yeah, uh, seven and a half. Oh, oh seven okay. and a half. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll take seven in the hook with Auburn. I can't – I'm not going to doubt Bo Nix week one. Uh, I think Gus has the boys fired the fuck up. Uh, Auburn's ready to prove that they're the best team in Alabama again. I think they I think they can do it. Not that I, confident, though. I think – For those two I love ones. Mark Stoops as a coach, so I don't want to say that. But I think Saturday when we're watching and this, like, this is going to finally feel like college football. Dude, it's actually. back. Yeah. The SEC is it's back. back. We are back. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's actually- Dude, once you – imagine you turn on SEC. It's fucking – so this is the first game of the – yeah, so you turn on this 11 game. 11 a.m., yeah. You turn on this game, CBS, right? Is it on CBS? No, it's on fucking SEC Network. Oh, no. Who's yeah. the first game on – CBS Florida, is Mississippi, Mississippi State, LSU. Mississippi oh, State, okay. LSU. Well, when you hear that, bang, yeah. bang, bang, like just <laughs> fucking come and on. And don't take it for granted. It's gone in a few years. SEC, oh, who, yeah, who got exclusively that? Exclusively ESPN in oh, that's 23. So if ESPN Ooh. doesn't buy, if ESPN Ooh. doesn't buy that song, I, like that's just the dumbest thing they could ever do. Yeah, the ESPN football song blows. Oh, it's horrible. What Sweet. is? I don't even know what it is. It like I, I always have to refer to the NFL. It's like um, fuck. Um, here I'll look it up. I'll look it up as I'm looking it up. I'll say what I like in this game. Uh, I think I agree. I think Auburn like is gonna have that kind of thing to prove. They want to get like, put their foot in the door, explode. I think they're gonna score like seventeen or twenty one points in the first quarter, honestly. Um, so I think the halftime score will be like twenty eight. Like they'll they'll score like twenty four, twenty eight points in the first half. I think the over is gonna hit. Um, I am worried about a back door if they slow down in the second half. After yeah. They get- like three scores in the first half. So, but I like the over. I mean, an SEC matchup opening week under 50 points, like with two relevant teams, I would say like both these teams are like top 50% of the SEC. Yeah, Kentucky um, is good. Mark yeah, Stoops has a good program going on. And, and what we've seen like these first two weeks, um, like if, it, if one half of like the offense or defense tends to slack or struggle, it's definitely the defensive side for the most part. Definitely some teams struggle more on the offensive side, but generally yeah. more struggle on defense. So I really like 49 and a half. Um, that is low, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I don't know. Like you said, the, both sides having some defense come back make me worried about that. It, uh, it, Kentucky with a good secondary, too. Is right. It won't – it's not going to be on my card, but – Yeah, um, I'm not – this is a – but just – it's only because – I think it's per, it's almost perfect, like, right where it's at. I think the, both the line and the points will be within five. I think Five's I, a lot, but, like, I think five for the, the total and then – I think you'll field. get to, like, 50, yeah. 50 like, two to 54. And yeah, like, you'll be sweating it out. Like, you will need something to happen in the final two minutes, I think. Right. This, uh, um, here, I just found it. That's, that's what we're going to be loving, boys. Get your dick tingling, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's – that's like fuck. that's fire, bro. This is what we need, boys. This is how you know it's back. This is how you know it's back. That's what I'm saying. Like Saturday when you're sitting there, that's when you know it's like fuck yes. We Dude, this are is back. Yes, that's like the that's NFL. Monday Night Football. That's, that's NFL. Like, yeah, A college. I don't think they have one. I think they just do like different um, songs. Like right now, they have that Juice World song when you go. And oh, make okay. It, right? I think that, they do that would do make sense. That would make sense. Songs. But, okay, second game, what are we talking, Louisville Pitt? Yeah, Louisville Pitt's the second game we're going to talk about. Uh, Louisville coming off a tough game. Seven twenty one or something. Yeah, 37, 47, 30. 47, yeah. They, 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 they put up some damn points, though. Yeah. Good for them. Ooh, Louisville. Yeah, I mean they both did, but yeah. I didn't know Miami's offense was capable. Of Dude, doing I mean that's they looked a lot better than okay. against UAB, but at the same time, I mean that's what 
King and the boys are – we thought they could do. Yeah. And, like, we, we, we talked about that last week, like how Louisville was more offensive focused anyways. But still, like, I definitely didn't think they were going to put a 40 ball on them. But anyway, so Louisville's going to Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh's a favorite. Pittsburgh minus three, over under 55. Okay, Olena, you had Syracuse last weekend at Pitt. Uh, no, a no-doubter. That line was, like, insanely high for Pitt just beating Austin P. in my opinion. Like, I mean, hey, let's give credit to Austin P. Tough team. <laughs> Dude, they have lost. They're owing whatever on the spread. They have not covered a spread. But I think Pitt, like, I think Louisville's pretty good. Like, I think Miami's pretty good. I think Louisville's pretty good. I think Pitt's getting way too much credit for, like, two wins that really don't mean – how much Pitt? stock do you put into the the pit? Pit Syracuse is like a that's like one of their biggest rivals, right? Yeah, but like I don't think Syracuse. Like I do think I think Syracuse. You got to think though. Like North Carolina ended up killing. Like I don't. I put more stock in how Louisville played against Miami than how Pitt played against Syracuse. I will agree with that. 100%. But yeah. I also think though, like Pitt at home, like no fans is a like if they had some fans, I think it could be something. But like. I love Louisville in this game. Like, absolutely love Louisville. I think their quarterback's a stud. I love their fucking coach, Satterfield. He's a great coach. I love Louisville. I think Louisville goes on the road and wins. They could. They definitely could. I, I, I'm I, putting more stock into Syracuse than a lot of people are. So, North Carolina is ranked 11th. I know that doesn't really mean much with this, but. Yes, yeah, so North Carolina is good, though. So, I mean, to, help, to hold them to 30 points is pretty impressive, I think. But that also could be the first game bullshit for North Carolina. And then they – sure. Pitt – holding Pitt to only 21, I think, is a little impressive. So, Syracuse's offense is definitely – they put up a total of 16 points against the two teams worth of shit so far. I guess that's their only games this year. Um, so, offense is definitely the, uh, the question mark here. And I think um, – it's kind of I guess I I guess I understand why Pitt's favored, but Oh, I get why Pitt's favored for sure. Yeah, but it, but home. I mean like obviously it's a it's a three point it's like they might as well if there's a neutral side it'd be a fucking pick 'em at this point. A hundred percent. Three points because they're playing at home. For right. Sure. So I think this is gonna be a very, very close game. And with the line being at three, um I don't necessarily like Either team, uh, if I had to pick, I think I would go Louisville plus three, though, just to – because I think it is going to be that close, but I'm a little bit more confident in the over. So, I, I, I would – my recommendation here is Louisville plus three and double dip the over. I think these guys are going to um, – they're in for a shootout. We saw uh, UAB's defense might be a little bit better than Louisville's. Who knows? Um, and – I don't think Pitt's anything special on defense. So I think Louisville's going to score, and I think Pitt shows what they can do against Austin P. So we should have a shootout here. I actually have interesting uh, thing that just happened. I was just, like, scrolling through, making sure I had the next game we were talking about ready to go. And uh, my finger accidentally selected Louisville money line plus 125. So – I'm going to take that from a, as a sign from the gods. Ooh, I like it. I like oh. it. I, already, I actually already have this game on my card, so I think that's just, like, a little extra confident boost. But, yeah, Louisville plus three, like, I think that Miami game was, like, the best thing that could have happened for them, even, like, no, they even though they lost. Like, they're going to have so much to work on this week to, like, improve their team. Well, um, their offense is clearly pretty good. Their defense yeah. doesn't have to play Derek King again. So. Right. And, and how much? How many points were scrapped there, though? Like, was there much to look at scrap-wise points from Miami? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like was for no for uh, Louisville. Like, were they down? I I didn't. I don't think I caught the end of the game. Like, were they down? It was twenty no. to six at half. They were down seventeen at the end of the third. Okay. So, so there could have been like one garbage touchdown in there, but either way, I mean, they still put them, they put them up. Uh, they actually they didn't score the last six minutes of the game, so it wasn't really garbage, right. garbage. Hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of back and forth of back and forth touchdowns between the two teams in the third quarter. Like it was just like touchdown after touchdown. But 
Yeah, I'm I'm liking Louisville plus three. Pittsburgh played the Syracuse backup last week, who also looked good. Uh, he made like as soon as the backup came in for Syracuse, he made like one really great pass, and then I didn't really watch the rest of the game, but it didn't look like Syracuse really put anything super impressive on offense. But I still no. like Louisville. <laughs> no, they did not. All right. We're so next. Game, Next game we're going to talk about is Army going into Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati's coming in at a 14-point favorite over under 45 and a half. Dude, I, I mean, I don't know. I just don't think I saw enough in Cincy to win by – I think that's a lot of points in my opinion. I think Cincy will win. I don't think that by that much though. Army's pretty good. This is a chance, though, for Army to, like, in a season like this where everything's kind of fucking weird, since he's ranked high right now because so many teams aren't ranked, Army somehow fucking wins and is still undefeated. They still have to play BYU. Like, this is Army's chance to have a fucking chance of going to a BCS bowl game or a New Year's Six bowl game. I like Army with the points. I just think it's too many points. Uh, and it's, it's plus 11 and a half or what is it? 14? 14. 14. It's 14. 14. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's a lot of points. It's two touchdowns. Like, the way Army plays, it's tough to stop them, and they take so much time off the clock. They score a late touchdown. Like, yeah. if the game's close at half, I think they cover. The problem is, if since he's up, like, 21 at half, that's when, like, you have no chance because Army is not a two-minute See, it, it, see the, 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 the problem is something's got to give here. Army – or, sorry, Cincinnati – is a, a team that scores at the drop of a hat. You're right. Army does the exact opposite. So one of them is going to get bit right in the ass here. So is it, is it, it could be like that Oklahoma game a few years ago where Oklahoma scored so quickly, but they weren't scoring so quickly. And Army was also scoring and taking, keeping Oklahoma's offense. Exactly. Off the field. So then, it, like, then it's like, you can yeah, never then they pull have, away because you right. can't get in a rhythm, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you're going to need like, like, Three, three different or four different drives to go your way, both including right. offense and defense, to even like have a chance to cover that. Yeah, that's a scary. It's a I mean, yeah, Cincinnati. Yeah. Cincinnati almost blew that shit. Yeah, last, week. last Saturday they did. They like Austin P almost scored like three touchdowns in the fourth quarter to cover. Th- their starters could not have been in, right? Like I couldn't watch Since that he's... game. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure they took them out like in the middle of the first. Yeah, quarter. so it's like yeah. P was beating up on the JV guys, but. Hundred percent was. That's what I'm saying, man. Austin P, pretty <laughs> good team. Nagy, who do but, you? Yeah, I mean, I think this game's a lot closer than uh, thirteen and a half. I, I, yeah, I or fourteen, I guess. I, I would definitely take Army here, and I wouldn't be that confident, but I do think. What is the over at 45 for you guys? 45 and a half. Yeah. Okay, 45 and a half. Really like that over, though. I was going to say, if, since he can't stop Army, that over, like, no way it does. That's doesn't a lot. Hit. Yeah. That's what I'm no saying. And they, so, hit. but they, Austin P's big touchdowns were runs, though. Like, they were, like, huge runs. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, since he's not, like, an Ohio State where, like, they can, yeah. like, they don't. Like, their have... D line isn't going to be a crazy D line where Army can oh, probably no. get, like, some great ass runs on him. Bro, and sin- who the hell does Cincinnati when's, – when's the last time they prepared for a triple option? Like, let's think. Do they – that no, could be no, – like, who knows if that coach even knows what the well, hell they do. they play Navy every year, actually. Now. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah. Because okay. wow. Navy's an American. A little bit scarier, I guess. So they probably have, like, a – A sense, guy. yeah, but, I mean – I mean, Army's looked – Army's put up points, though, like, in every – Game, Army's right? good this year. Yeah, they've scored over 40 points both games. Yeah. And, I mean, I wouldn't say Cincinnati has some crazy good defense. I mean, they have Army hasn't played the craziest. No one likes Cincinnati, yeah, but I don't think Cincinnati is going to. Yeah, I mean, Cincinnati, like, they don't – yeah, they don't, they don't strike me as a – the team that is going to be able to stop a well-oiled machine in a triple option. So, right. I like Army and the over here, another double dip. Yeah, I'm I'm all over this over. I agree. Um, cuz I feel like I do I do agree with um I do agree with Michael that like 
14 is like a lot of, feels like a lot of points for how well Army has played so far this year. But I'm afraid like if Cincinnati rolls mm-hmm. um, that they're not going to slow down. They see this year as like a special opportunity for them to have an actual case to make. Well, so what does Army do if they're down big though? Like do you just stick with it or do you, like, do you start throwing? Uh, I think it depends. If you get to the third quarter, you're down three scores. I think you got to start throwing. If you're down three scores like at the start of the second quarter, I think you just continue what you do. But I think I think it comes out close. Like it starts close. Like through the first quarter, it'll be like like seven ten through the first, yeah. and then if yeah, it, it can't pass unless they turn the ball over or get like three and out. Like gonna time's gonna come off the ball. clock. Yeah, for sure. Right. Will. But I still I still like the over just because, um, like I was I was I was getting to earlier. Um, Cincinnati has like a, a super like special opportunity this year to actually have a case if they go undefeated. 21 28, you hit. To possibly That's make, not that crazy um, of a score. To possibly make a case for the football playoff. I'm not saying they should if they go perfect, but they'll definitely be in the conversation and a big win over Army that could probably finish the year with only two or three losses would be a great like thing to have on the resume if Army ends up continuing to play well after this week. So I like the over 45 and a half a lot. We'll see, because I mean, You'll Cincinnati know. starters will be in this entire game, unless so either they're going to put up the points and their starters will be out again. But assuming this is a relatively good game, we'll we'll truly see think, how many points they can put up here. I think you'll know if this game is going to cover and hit the over within the first quarter. Yeah, like I think the first like since, he, if, since he's moving the ball like crazy, I think even if. I think it's going to, like, if since he's moving the ball like crazy and just scoring and scoring and scoring, I think the over is going to hit regardless because Army's going to score touchdowns. And even if it's the fourth quarter and they have twos in and they're up 28 points, like, Army's going to move the fucking ball down the field on those guys with the option. So they'll score a few bullshit. Yeah. Touchdowns. If, if, I think, if Austin I think Peay's Cincy, driving down the field, that's what then I'm saying. Army's I think since he scored, if they're it. rolling, they're going to score 35 points. But if Army's moving the football and since he's like, barely getting first downs, I think there's, like, no doubt Army covers this game. Like, no doubt. You, you need four touchdowns out of one team, three from the other, and you got it. I think exactly. that's Exactly, which I damn. think whoever wins might score more than four touchdowns. I agree. I, I don't see – I mean, and what we're saying this, it'll be a 7-3 final. But. <laughs> yeah, right. How's it going to go? <laughs> um, uh, all right, so game day this week is in Miami – uh, Florida State's going into Miami, state rivalry. Uh, Miami's Miami right now is an 11-and-a-half point favorite, over-under 53-and-a-half. So that over-under is 10 or 11 points lower than the over-under for Miami and Louisville from last week. And Florida State looked flat as hell their first game against Georgia Tech. What do you guys think about this? What are we thinking? So this Florida State's one. coach is not coaching. He has COVID. He tested positive on Saturday, so he's not Nice coaching. cop out. Yeah, like my team sucks. I have COVID. I'm <laughs> done. Knowing that we're going to get our ass beat by Miami. Um, I think Miami fucking rolls in this game. I think they're going to like – because if this is at Florida State, I would feel a little differently because I think Florida State probably had a rough-ass practice after that Georgia Tech game. Um, I do love the over, though, because I think – like, more, Mike Norvell's an offensive coach, so I think Florida State's offense is going to be a lot better and di- do different things. And then, like, as we saw Saturday night, Miami's offense is fucking legit. Derek King is a legit Heisman contender. I mean, the dude is insane. Um, I don't think Florida State can stop De- Derek King, so Miami's going to score. It's like, can you get 21 points almost from Florida State? I could see that because, I, see, I, I mean, in these type of games – Florida State, if they're getting killed, they're going to keep their fucking stars in there the entire game just to score, like, bullshit touchdowns and make it look a little closer. Yeah, get practice. So, I love the over. I wouldn't mind taking Miami because I think Florida State's just not good. I don't know if it's, like, their talent's not good because it seems like they always have top 25 recruiting classes or just the culture as a whole is so fucked right now from the past five years that they just need to get a whole different group of people in. Like I think I think Mike Norvell's a good coach. I just think 
I think the culture is so fucked right now in my Florida State that like it's gonna take three years for them to get like good again. And it's really it's like really bad timing because like Miami hasn't been very good the past couple of years, and then they're right. starting to get a little momentum. Right. And, like they're starting to be the shining team of Florida. Well, fuck, right now. Dude, if fucking Miami looks good in this game and they're three and zero, I mean they're a top fifteen team. So oh, you know sure. what I mean? Like right. it's. I mean, here's the thing though. Since 2013, this is one of those games where you throw stats out the fucking window. Since 2013, there's only it's only happened twice where this game was with was bigger than a four point margin. Is, the, yeah. is this going to be the third time that that it happens? I, I think. Yeah, I I just think I think De'Aaron King's so good. Like I think he. Yeah, I mean it's this is like one of those where it's like I mean it's probably been like this in, in the in the past seven years as well, but. This one, it's like teetered. Like Miami's, Miami's not like insane, but they're damn good. Florida is damn bad. Florida offense, State's damn bad. Yeah, I think their offense is like teetered really good. But it's gonna be one of those things where like, Dear King loves the spotlight. Like he's a fucking phenomenal college football player. He has a chance of going to that win the Heisman. Game day is gonna be there. It's gonna be the whole like, is the U coming back? Did Dear King resurrect this fucking uh, program? Like. He was at Houston. He comes here. Who knows how good Miami is if he doesn't come yeah. here? He, from day one, everyone said he's the leader on the football team. Like, I just – I watched this interview about him, about how last year his dad died, like, a day – this date last year. And he was talking about how, like, he felt betrayed by Holgerson at Houston for telling him to red shirt. And then he was like, it was a blessing in disguise because now I got to come to Miami and ball out and, like, I watched that interview and I was just like, fuck yeah, let's go. Miami's going to fucking murder him. Like, I just he, think this, I think he's out to prove something. I, like, I, I have no doubt everything you just said will be completely factual. Miami is going to be fired the fuck up mm-hmm. to play this goddamn game. Like, no doubt about it. Problem is, if Florida State is going to lay down for the rest of the year, which they very well could after this game. If Miami roundhouses them, they will be ready to play this fucking – like, it doesn't matter who the hell's coaching you. You are ready to sure. play fucking Miami. For sure, but I'm pretty sure Norvell calls the plays. So, like, that's – that's, like, a huge hit. Yeah. I I just – this is I, – I think a first-year coaching staff not having the head coach is huge. I think if this was, like – Saban coaching staff who's been together for a while. Everyone, yeah, head no, it is. That, that's definitely big. That like, is definitely has their, big. Has their offensive coordinator been a head coach ever before? Has their defense coordinator, you know what I mean? So it's like, mm-hmm. who's taking control? Who's calling the timeout? Who's going for it on fourth down if it's a crucial situation? You know what I mean? Like, it's all these, yeah. it's all these situations that, like, that's a very good point. Maybe these guys have never been in that situation, and this is their week at Miami when Miami is. Now let's let's be honest. Miami probably isn't ranked this. If everyone can still be ranked, yeah, but they're probably like twentieth. Though I was gonna like say 18, they're probably 19. in the top twenty-five after Louisville because Louisville won one and zero, and like that would have been a good win for them. But I mean, now that Miami is ranked this high, you have this thing in your head like, oh, we're legit, you know, and Miami yeah. ready to play, and Miami's ready to prove something. Game days there, turnover chain. That's real gold is down there. Like they're gonna be fucking fired up to play, and if. Florida State gets smacked in the mouth and they have to go for it on a fourth down. Are they going for it? Like, that's – it's just like, how does Norvell – and he can't be at practice is the thing. It's not like he, like, broke his leg and he's on a wheelchair. He's not just flying down. He can't even be around the team for a week. So, and also in this history – so, in, in 20, 2010 to 2016, Florida State did not lose, and now it's been yes. three straight for Miami. Yes. So – you know that's being talked about, like they, in the Florida sure. State rock room. Like we have not, but ha- not having the head coach is a, is just big for just for all those little things like that. Real, like you you take them for granted, obviously. Like yeah. when to call timeout, like timeout ma- time management, clock management overall, timeout management, when to go for it, when not. Like those, and it's also though like it's like you know the head coach makes the decision. What if the OC wants one thing and the DC wants another? Yeah, right. They're gonna clash because there's nothing. There's no one above those two. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to give it to one of them. but Yeah, also, they got to make that clear who's, who's got the But it's also like the whistle. OC and he gives it to the DC, and I completely disagree with you. Like, I'm going to be pretty ticked off. Right. Like, it's like, I don't know. I, 11 is a – in this year, in this game – It is a lot. This, this like, is, 11 is a shit ton of points. 
but Miami could easily do it. My thing is, this is like one of those rivals. Like, I think there's like usually like three, maybe like there's probably like five, a handful where you literally just can throw stats out the fucking window. Like it does not matter. This is one of them for me. I I don't know. I feel like this should be a shootout, if anything, right? Like you got a fired fired up offense with Miami. Um their and their defense isn't that great. I mean, I don't think Louisville's offense is like anything special. UAB looked okay at times, like they could run the ball. Louisville has a, a good bit. offense, but Miami's defense is not that good. Yeah, I guess. But I know Florida State's offense isn't that good either. Um, I could see the overhitting, but I think it's gonna eke it out if it does. Um, I, I would say, like, I'm not kidding. I would if I had to bet on this, I'd go FSU plus eleven. And a half. The dog. Maggie. And a half. Um, yeah, I think I think this number like the spread and the over under are set like really, really well. Um and you know what fair fair enough to the bookmakers. I feel like these highlighted games that are game day or like a primetime game that you see in like NFL. I feel like the shark like the bookmakers spend a lot more time and research. Not not like a huge amount, but they want they want to be super sharp on those because more people are going to be watching heads betting. Sure. Um, so I think I think this is a really tough game. Uh, Michael kind of swayed my opinion a little bit while I was listening. Um, I I don't think Florida State. I think Florida State is completely fraudulent right hey, now. You're you're one and zero going against them. I am one and zero going against them, but. I I feel like I like the under a little more than the than the spread. Yeah, Florida State's gonna be flat as hell. Um, I could see that too. But I, and again, it's still it's still a big rivalry, and Florida State could still have like a couple of moments of shine on defense. Um, I I feel like they'll make more plays on defense possibly than offense. I just thought their offense looked so, so bad against Georgia Tech. Like, their defense at least made some plays. Um, I, I, I think I'm going to go with the under 53 and a half, and it's not because I love it. It's just have to pick one kind of thing. Um, but I do think Miami wins for sure. Like, if, if Miami dips, like, if, if people start trending towards Florida State, like, I'm probably going to have to hop on. Like, if, if Miami is – if Miami gets down to minus nine and a half, I will yeah, probably. I don't think you'll see that. I think more people will jump on Miami. Right. That's what I'm saying. I I would never bet Florida State spread on this ever. Yeah. I don't believe them at all. But anyway, that being said, that's the last game, highlighting game we're going to talk about. Uh, time to get into our cards. Um, like we said at the beginning of the show, Elena. Wait, had, what about Vatek, right? Or was that? We no, no, we just did these four. Oh. Like I said earlier, um, right now in the standings, uh, um, Alina is plus 19.8, and Michael and I are both minus five or so units. Um, so we, we got like 24 units uh, worth of <laughs> to do. Between 24. Now, um, and through like the conference championship game. So I've, I've, definitely, I've definitely loaded up my do or dies a little bit more this week. Got to take the risk. Um, you, can, you, you can only take two. Two what? Do or die. Do or one. Oh yeah. You're oh one yeah. yeah. I, only, I only have. I only. I think I took it down to two. I think I took one of them off. But anyway, we'll do the do or dies at the end, and yep. then the do do's. We'll, yeah. So Michael, why don't you give your card? Yep. Real quick? I got Syracuse plus seven and a half. Uh, Louisville money line. Army plus fourteen. Miami, Florida State over fifty three and a half. BYU minus 13 and a half. Miami minus 11 and a half. Am I do or die? I will save till the end. All right. So I have Ja, no, Ba Tech over NC State. It's minus seven on, for me. Is it different on yours? That's what I have too. Okay, I yeah. got them minus seven. Um, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna take that. I was. I was thinking about by by who, but I'm not gonna take it. Um, let's see. I like. I like La Tech 
over Houston Baptist minus twenty three. Is that what you have? Houston Baptist. Uh, yeah. What you say? I, I have twenty three. I have twenty three and a half. No, twenty three and a half. I still like that. Um, then, let's see where was the other one? Yeah, twenty three and a half. Twenty three and a half. All right. Um, lock it in. Lock it in. Uh, LSU, no. That one, no. Oh, the oh the uh, I say that for my mortal. Okay, and then oh the, the other one. Um, I like the over in the West Virginia and Oklahoma State game at fifty one or fifty one. That, Dude, that's got to be like one of the lowest over or totals in because Big Oklahoma history. State didn't score last week. That's why. But that, that's yeah. exactly why we love it because yeah. now they're gonna fucking run it the fuck up. West Virginia can score. Put yeah. it down for uh, fifty-one and a half. Fifty-one and a half. Yeah. Then I like Army uh, plus thirteen and a half. Fourteen. Or is it plus fourteen? 14. Plus fourteen. Yeah. Um. And then oh, I love Iowa State minus two and a half against. Or is it two? It's I have two and a half. Two and a half against TCU. I think they bounce back a little bit. Um, that was a really ugly loss for them yeah. against what's their face. So Lafayette. like that. Um, and then I got two and a half as well. Okay, and then where's the uh, total for Louisville and Pitt? Fifty five. Uh, um, that's what I had. Yeah, I like I like that too. Over? You like the over? Yeah, the over in that one. Yeah. And then – Save your do or die. Yeah, that's, that's it. Okay. If you, if you think of any others, just save it for a sec. Um, so, my first games are going to be um, – so, yeah, like we said earlier, SEC back is awesome. So, I'm, I got a couple SEC ones on my card. I got um, – fuck, where is it? I took, I took Florida over 57. Um, trying to find it. Trying to. Oh yeah, they play Ole Miss. I took. Yep. Four over fifty-seven. I got Louisville plus three. Um, and then Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse playing Georgia Tech. I took the under yep. under fifty-two and a half. Good. And pick. then I got Iowa State minus two and a half as well. Um, I think that's a good. I, that's a really good pick. Yeah, I think I, I agree with the bounce back. I, I, and I think I, the the uh, Louisiana team that they played is like good. Yeah, like, they're not bad. They are. They're it not is, bad. I it think is, it, it is grossly underestimated. From it the, is TCU's like, first game, so like it's either they're going to be really ready to play or like very really sluggish. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, and that, that's a that's another thing. First, the first game uh, or game under your belt versus not against a good team. Jeez, yeah, they are getting. I, I do think that is a. And in TCU, like, dude, though, I mean, I don't give a shit if they have fans. To be honest, like. And then I got um, Texas uh, at Texas uh, Tech. I took the under seventy. Yeah, I saw I, that. Neither oh, neither of those teams have played like a good defensive team yet, and I think they both have like formidable defenses. So, um, I think like a lot of people are just going to see how many points they've been putting up and take the over. So I'm not going to bet that until probably Game Saturday. Day. I think it's going to go up to like 74, 74 and a half. But like for the sake of the show, I'll put it down to 70. I still think it'll be like right in the mid 60s, low 60s. But anyway, and then uh, my last one that's not do or die is uh, Virginia over 45 and a half. They're playing Duke. Okay, do or dies now. Yep, All right, so my do or die, I can only take one. If I lose, I'm on a three-game losing streak, and I will get a punishment. Um, we'll worry about that Saturday because I won't lose. My do or die for four units is Tennessee minus three and a half at South Carolina. Nice. Tennessee. Ooh. Neither of them have played. Okay, they're both SEC. Yep, zero and zero. Yeah. Interesting pick. We didn't even talk. Oh, yeah, we didn't touch on that. I like that pick, though. Um. So my the do the do the dad is uh where the fuck is it? I just had it up. It's Army Cincinnati over forty five. Talked about that earlier. And how many units? I, I'm gonna put. Oh, here it comes. 
eight. <laughs> no, I, I don't like it that much. I'll put – I'm only going to put two units on it. Ooh. Oh. Keeping it – Dude, I might – no, I, I'm going to look deeper into this because I, I got fucked by a flat tire today. I might <laughs> switch some shit up and put a little bit more on it, but for now. Yeah, right, like, what's like, your... we mentioned, like we mentioned before, we'll have all these picks on Twitter as well. Um, <laughs> so if anything's like uh... – Wait, another one before, before you say you're do or die in case no one saw this? Dude. UCF in East Carolina yeah. on, on under 77. That's a lot of points. That's, Dude, a lot of points. that's a ton of points. Yeah. yeah. Score like- that's like one of those if a, if, a t- if a drive takes more than five minutes and they don't get any points, you might, you might right then already win that bet. Imagine they had a Hanson for college football. <laughs> Bro, that'd be so fun. Be like 1,200 points. That's like the coolest bet. It is such a game changer. I love the Hanson. <laughs> Nagy, right. who's your so, do or die? So Nagy's on a one-game losing streak. If he yeah. loses two more, he's in the same. I, I did do. I did do. Uh, I did two do or dies this week. Just so if so, if I lose both and Michael loses his, hopefully that doesn't happen. But if we lose all three of these, then we'll both. I'll be doing the show by myself next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we both do the punishment. Whatever, fuck it. But I. I'm really confident in one of these, and then the other one is more of just a big fucking middle finger. So my first one is uh, UAB minus seven against South Alabama. Okay. Three. UAB. I love watching UAB games too, so I know I'm gonna like catch a lot, of, a good portion of that game. Okay, Rico, let's go. Um, <laughs> yeah, Rico Bosco on the call. <laughs> For and the then, kids. Fuck, and then fuck Tulane. Fuck Tulane. Fuck oh no! Don't don't do Southern it. Southern Mississippi plus three and a half for three. Brother, you're getting you're getting good value for Tulane right here after He's that. He's chasing Tulane now. Oh, no. so that's either like you're gonna look great and fuck up. I wish you best of luck there. That's okay. tough. Yeah, if hey. I was, if I was gonna put a fuck you Tulane pick, I couldn't just put it for one unit. Like I had to make it. A yeah, <laughs> I that, like that. That needs like to that. be on the card as a fuck you Tulane. Yeah, do fuck or you die, Tulane. Tulane. Yeah. Good luck on that ace, sir. Yeah. Wow, that's a big pick. So wait, wait, wait. Are we still doing the original idea where? So once you go zero and three with your <laughs> your uh, do or dies, you have to have as many you have to eat as many cheeseburgers as you're down as you were down units for that zero and three. So if you're down like twelve burgers, you gotta get twelve. You gotta Is that get what we're gonna do as a punishment? That's fine. I'm good with that. Cause then I just we gotta do it. We have to like do it on here and. Like to record it, so you guys got to so eat. So mine would fucking be ten burgers. All right, so you want to do like a ten unit? Uh, no, 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 no. That's yeah. what we do. That's what we do. That's what we do. You have to eat the burgers throughout the time mm-hmm. of us filming. Oh, pod- that's perfect. Recording so, the podcast. Dude, that's gonna be hilarious because you just got <laughs> mouthfuls of burger trying to get your picture. Also, like, oh yeah, love that. But also, if like right. someone tweets at us another one, you still you have to do that too within reason. But yeah. Sure. So, so like, do someone we cap it at ten burgers though, or like if you? No, I think it's like, however, however long. All right. How many units would you be down, Maggie? I'd be down nine if I lose both of these. Like uh, for my doer, because yeah. all three of them would be three units. Imagine yeah, if I would. lost mine, I'd be down like seventeen or whatever it was, or twenty. You're back to back. You would be. You're at eighteen. Eighteen. And then you lose this week at two. That'd be twenty. Yeah, you probably do a two unit one and just. Uh, I do it back to back weeks with ten burgers. Shout out, shout shout out, Connor Pat. Shout out, Connor Patton. He always follows the show. But uh, C Pat, I'll do your punishment. I fucking hate Max Kellerman. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't stand Max Kellerman. I've uh, challenged him to a boxing match about fifteen times on Twitter. (laughs) That little skell won't respond to me. So, um, (laughs) yeah, C Pat, I'll tweet nice things at. Tweet Kellerman compliments all fucking week. Yes. So that wraps it up today. Minimum minimum five tweets per day, or what are you doing? Yeah, uh, that's fine. Minimum five tweets per day. Nice. I dude, if you guys couldn't tell, my my card is never this heavy. I fucking love this board. I was gonna say you have a lot more picks than normal. I was looking at your cards last few weeks, and you have way more. Yeah. there's like five total picks. Now there's like that Max Kellerman punishment. But I'll do it for Sarah Spain. I you guess. hate Sarah Spain that much, bro. Some of her takes are fucking awful. Okay, yeah. Sarah Spain and Max Kellerman for me, and then the burger challenge. Okay, yeah. that works. All right, we'll see everyone next week. 
Hopefully we're not eating burgers. <laughs>